What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Frayed Brush. I am Big Aaron. Um, today, what we're going to be working on is this uh, werewolf bust from White Werewolf Tavern. Um, I got this as one of their files. I was a member of their Patreon for a little bit. Um, this is one of the files that they gave. Um, it's really clean sculpt. Um, I probably could have done a better job on the cleanup after the print, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I've mentioned, uh, I think last stream and in some, a couple of discords, a lot of times I'll take a, uh, picture of what I'm working on. Hey, what's up, Dennis? Um, a lot of times I'll take a picture of what I'm working on and change it to a black and white scale to be able to get a good idea of shadows and highlights and stuff because I don't. I never really saw, well, I can't say I didn't really saw. I started out doing a lot of uh, zenithal priming and then realized I wasn't using thin enough coats to actually be able to use that. So that's when I started with the picture. <clears throat> and in the uh, lower right corner of the screen there, uh, you can see the uh, an example of the type of picture I take. And see, Whoop. same, same. Okay. Um, and then I also have a reference picture up on a different screen for colors but I can't uh, show that because of all that cool copyright stuff so we'll go ahead <clears throat> and get started with this and um, at one point while this is kind of setting a little bit I'll show you another project that I'm working on um, get the palette down here a little bit more all right um, we're gonna do our pre-glaze so we're gonna start out with some uh, burnt umber from Van Gogh um, I've really started liking these paints. They've really got a good, good consistency um, coming out of the tube like butter. Um, got us some odorless mineral spirits, and let's grab um, a brush here. Uh, we'll just use this one, just regular uh, size 8 craft brush. And we'll get our little uh, mixture set up here to do the pre glaze. A little bit more. And then we just get it dirty. Want to get it thin enough so it kind of gets down on all the little nooks and crannies and this will set up our um, in a way it kind of does what the uh, black and white photo does a little bit um, I usually have the black and white photo on my phone sitting in a little stand uh, on my desk but I figure I'm always looking up at the screen anyway it wouldn't hurt to have it up there so now what we're gonna do we're just gonna take this and just put it all over it and I think before I've been having kind of an issue with uh, my pre-glaze kind of being too thick. So I'm kind of thinning it a little bit extra today. Hello, wife. So hopefully it kind of cleans up a little bit better. Because um, I noticed there was like some really, really, really thick uh, oil paint left over. Um, after I've done this on previous models. Um, so, we'll get in here real well. Make him swallow the brush. And then, as you can see, my metallic's already done. Um, uh, interesting story about the metallics. Um, <clears throat> I do a lot of, I watch a lot of, uh, Grimm's videos um, he's a big fan of the monument metallics which which are great um, but I think I think model painting is one of those things once you kind of get used to something uh, you might try different things but I think in a way you always end up kind of going back to what you know in a way and you know I tried the monument metallics but I think 
I like the consistency of the uh, Vallejo metal color better. The Vallejo metal color are um, airbrush rated metallics. And I just kind of got used to the way uh, they flow. And I like the way they look. So this is originally some Monument Pro Acryl Silver. Then I wanted something a little bit shinier. So I started going over it with some, uh, oh, well, we'll do this. So here's the first color I did. I did the uh, Monument Pro Acryl Silver Metallic. Wanted something a little bit shinier. So then I went with the uh, metal color what is that? Pale burnt metal. Okay. Then I didn't really like the shine that I had. So I ended up with some Vallejo metal color uh, aluminum. So that's where we're at now. That's the metal that's on the, the ring down here. Um, a little bit more of this mixed up here. So I'm so short. And just so there's no uh, mistakes, um, the only acrylic on this right now is the primer and the metallics. Everything else I'm using is oil colors. All right. I saw an interesting uh, thread on a Reddit that was brought to the attention of one of the Discord servers I'm a part of. Oh, goodness. All right. Apparently my cap wasn't on there good enough. All right, there we go. So, interesting post. A uh, person, not sure if it was male or female, um, put up a picture of some brand new materials they had gotten, you know, hobby materials. And... Uh, Oh, yeah, Crazy Wolf, absolutely right, absolutely, yeah, I, I love them, absolutely love them, brushing on, airbrushing, um, they're just amazing, um, <clears throat> but the, the person had put up a post of a bunch of new uh, modeling stuff they had gotten, you know, they had their X-Acto knife, and, you know, they had their model, and, you know, I don't, I don't do a great deal of, uh, games workshop stuff you know it's just not my not my cup of tea i guess um but they had had their model and you know a couple people pointed out you know it was a pretty pricey model and you know he had his little brushes and everything and probably about the only thing i saw he was missing was probably some odorless uh mineral spirits because he did have oil paints and you know i tell you he the the reaction from those people was horrible well for most of them okay there were some people in there that had just embraced the fact that you know a new person was getting into the hobby which is amazing as always but some of the others were talking about oh you're using oils you're gonna ruin it and you're gonna hate it and this and that and this and that and you know it was pretty bad and you know i've said on streams before you know i started out long 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 time ago you know using the old testers enamels before testers even had model color uh, you know, using the testers enamels, you know, for doing scale models. And, you know, then I moved on to, you know, miniatures, you know, a number of years later and, you know, switched over to, <laughs> yeah, haters, get them wife. Um, you know, then switched over to, <clears throat> you know, acrylic paints doing, you know, miniatures. And I actually started painting miniatures the first time because, um, uh, my wife, myself, and, you know, some of our sons were going to play D&D, &D, and one of my sons brought up the fact that, you know, I had all those testers paints and stuff, you know, I should just, you know, paint up some of their miniatures for them to use. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot, you know. Never touched a miniature before. And this was like, uh, man, late, late 2016. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure all of them had the uh, Golden Demons sitting on their... Uh, their bookcases where you just couldn't see them. Um, 
so it was about late, late 2016, maybe early 2017. Um, you know, I actually picked up a paintbrush and, you know, touched a miniature for the first time. And, you know, I started out in the normal, um, you know, 28 millimeter, 32 millimeter, you know, the old D and D, the whiz kids stuff, stuff like that. All right. We're going to let that sit for just a second and, uh, set up. Hopefully I won't drag my hand through all my paint. Um, uh, wife, you're too nice. Um, but you know, if you're willing to get out there and get into a hobby and start it for the first time and jump in with both feet, you know, don't, don't get discouraged by people. That's just ridiculous. Um, and you know, it's, it's a lot different than, you know, when I was growing up as far as getting information, you know, I mean, I came up, there were no cell phones, there was no internet, nothing like that. So everything traveled word of mouth and there's just such a wealth of knowledge on the internet in general over our hobby and the different mediums involved with our hobby. So you know what, if you want to try something new and you've never even, I missed a spot on the ear, and you know, you've never even picked up a paintbrush before. If you haven't been watching this stream and you're like, oh wow, you know, I wonder what this guy's doing. You know, just go get what you want and try it. Okay, it doesn't matter. Just have a good time with it. That's what it's all about anyway. Sit back, chill out, sling some paint, make some mistakes, get better, and just have fun. Um, okay, so now I'm going to hop off my, my soapbox. And while that uh, pre-glaze sets up a little bit, uh, <clears throat> future project I'm working for on my YouTube channel. Um, this is a... I don't know what scale this is, but this is a bust from Eastman. Um, I was a member of Patreon for a little bit. Um, and this, it looked kind of marred and stuff because I've started sanding it, um, getting it ready for paint. But this is off my FDM printer. Yeah, yeah, scale huge. Um, this is actually the first thing I've gotten off my FDM printer that I'm actually going to like work with and paint. Um, but this process is being followed on my YouTube channel. There's no videos up for it yet, but um, the video is in the process of being made now. So this ought to be a lot of fun. I think with this one, because it's so large, uh, I think I might actually do all the, get it to the point of doing all the base coats in, um, I'll probably use my Chimera colors to do all the base coats and then go in and do all the finishing work with oils just because it's such a large scale. But, uh, yeah, so this is the other project I'm working on. Pretty pleased. It took about, uh, I think, just over 51 hours to print. Um, I've got a, my FDM printer is a Focus Odin 5 F3. And this is some PLA resin from a company called J.O. Um, I've never heard of them before, but uh, I had a friend that sold me the resin, so I gave it a shot. And I'm pretty pleased with it, so looks nice. <clears throat> All right, so let's get our sponges in here and uh, we'll see if we can get some of this uh, burn umber off here without uh, knocking the model down again. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm, any, anybody that's here for the first time that's never seen me work, I'll warn you now, I am not uh, James Wapple by any stretch i do not move at his speed i sit here i chill out talk to people if you got information to offer up offer it i'm always willing to learn other than that we just sit here chill out lay down some paint so how's everybody doing today and this is uh, this initial color that I laid down for the pre-glaze is Burnt Umber from Van Gogh. Um, and I'll tell you what, let me show you how this pre-glaze works. I, hope, I don't know if y'all can see that or not, but I'd be willing to say that right off the bat, the wood's already done. I don't know if y'all can see that real well, but that wood looks pretty amazing already. So, <clears throat> winner, winner. And then I'm not quite sure what color we're going to do the wolf, but and you know, this, a 3d printed this holder 
and I don't think the holder is any issue at all. I think the issue is the double-sided tape that it is fastened to the holder with. I think that's why it's so wobbly. So. Um, I think we might go with kind of a, I don't know, maybe a Timberwolf type look, maybe. Looks like it's got some beiges and some dark colors and some browns and everything in there. And it looks like I did better with my, uh, with my pre-glaze this time. Um, seems to be coming off a lot better without leaving huge puddles behind see a couple of places on the model I could have could have cleaned up a little bit better probably but it is what it is socks for my uh, Spanish speaking folks socks K socks I like to say but I get uh, corrected And I'm fairly new to oil painting too, so I've only been oil painting about, I'd say probably really serious about it, maybe two, three weeks. So if there's anybody more experienced out there, um, I have no issues at all. Yeah, we probably are the only ones that understand the socks. Um, <clears throat> so if anybody out there has any tips, tricks, Anything like that, please feel free to uh, go ahead and spit them out there in chat. Um, if anybody has a uh, YouTube, a Twitch, uh, Instagram, any of that cool stuff that uh, has to do with uh, model painting, uh, oils or acrylics. Yeah, me too, Crazy Wolf. But I tell you, I don't know how much experience you had with... Um, acrylics before you started with oils but man i'm a believer i'm telling you that uh that discord i went ahead and snatched up that uh linseed uh brotherhood roll real fast because it seems like the way to go um, okay so let's see here We'll go ahead and start laying down some of these, uh, some of these browns. I got some, there is no method to my madness either, so don't, don't follow me by example. Um, we got some Van Dyke brown here. Looks like we can kind of start laying that in and around the, the ears and stuff. Ooh, that's dark. I was trying to go a little bit lighter, but we'll see what happens. <clears throat> Um, I didn't use this brush. We got a size four. Um, it's the Princeton Velvet Touch. Too late. Too late for what? Um. All right. I think that's gonna be a little bit. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit too dark for what we're looking for. So, let's try this. Let's get some of this ground white. Oh. Oh, no, do not follow my example. I can guarantee you that's not a good idea. All right, this is some of our uh, ground white that we laid out there. Man, that's a really, it's a crazy glare, isn't it? All right, we'll make it work. Um, and we'll... Brighten this up a little bit. Um, wait. Uh, that's 
that's not okay. Let's go a little bit, a little bit wider. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We can fix this thing. Go ahead and start working in on some of the face around here. <clears throat> Get some of these lighter colors laid in. Rose. And I've never painted a wolf before, so I'll take my method with a grain of salt. Okay. Tell you one thing about oils. Um, you can do thin over thick and thick over thin. Anything outside of that, you're just going to get a mixture. Okay. Um, pull in some of our uh, Naples yellows here. Naples yellow. And we'll hit up. I got another brush for that. Um, here we go. go to the number two. I'd use some of that, uh, the Winsor Newton Brush Cleaner and Restore. <clears throat> and that's some really good stuff if you've never used it before. And we might go back in and. Darken this up some. And these bright colors just are not showing up, are they? Let's go a little bit thicker. You know, the reason I have my YouTube and my uh, Twitch is to basically document um, my improvement as a miniature painter. Hopeful improvement, anyway. Grab a little blending brush here and knock those edges down. And. I am improving. Possibly not as fast as I want to, but improvement's improvement. It is a lot easier, in my opinion, painting with oils than acrylics Where's these blends in right there One thing I did learn was you always kind of want to keep um, wiping your brush off. Otherwise, you'll actually start mixing your colors instead of um, blending them. So I kind of like the way this is looking. Um, 
tell you what, since that goes along the first kind of layer of fur there, I'll go ahead and take some of this up on the top of the head here. Might should have let that, uh, um, that pre-glaze sit a little longer. Maybe let it set up a little bit longer. But we'll uh, see what we can do with it. All right, now get a little blending brush out here and start tapping to get that blended in. And we'll take it over onto that hair in a little bit. So we can kind of pick out those strands of the fur. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I wish I could have could have found that picture earlier. Um, and you know, I think you know, watching watching some of these great oil painters, you know, they they talk about you know color placement and stuffs not necessarily a. Uh, or I'm sorry, some of them actually mentioned they don't necessarily look for, you know, contrast. It's all about color placement. But man, I just can't can't get past that. Here's just some uh, titanium white we're putting out. This is from uh, this is Williamsburg. Uh, titanium white and I think we're gonna take uh, we'll grab this big old chunky thing right here um, I think we're gonna do we're gonna take some of that white and I think we might grab just a little bit of that skin tone kind of discolor a little bit of um, skin tone I'm sorry we're not working on skin um, Take a little bit of wolf tone, fur tone. There we go. Um, kind of dirty up this white a little bit. Um, kind of work that down into those bristles. I guess a little bit of a point back. And now we'll go ahead and hit some of these uh, teeth a little bit. So Crazy Wolf, how are you uh, enjoying um, working with the oils so far? Dennis, do you have any uh, projects going? I'm <laughs> scared. Yeah, I tell you, they can be. Uh, they can be intimidating. That's for sure. But I uh, commend you for uh, just getting in there and doing it you know i never i never did oil washes i always saw some great people use them i just never never went after them myself i mean i think there's definitely something to be said for you know at least trying the washes oh the ball rug Tell you what, Dennis, if you want, you go ahead and post up a picture of that into the uh, into the Discord and post a link to it if you want. 
Uh, here's where here's where I start hitting my issue with the finer brush control. Hey, you too, Crazy Wolf. If there's anything you got you want to post up and show off, then then by all means. You know, now that I'm thinking about this, that I've done the teeth, probably should have done the tongue. We'll get back to that. It'll be all right. I think the biggest thing I've had issues with so far oil painting is uh, paint consistency. Um, I've had a really big issue with that because I don't want to get my paint too thin because I don't want it to just wipe everything off. But I also want to get it thick enough to where it covers. Whoops. All right, so um, that's enough to get the teeth laid out for now. Um, go ahead and get some on that nose. So let's, uh, let's see. you know what? I'm gonna try some Payne's gray on the on the nose. That'll be enough of a darker color without using black to uh, get it to work. And believe me, I use a different brush. Okovo, hello. Yeah. Yeah, right. I agree 100%. Yeah, it's hard to transfer. Well, okay. It's a couple of things I've run into so far transferring from acrylics to oils is um number one the consistency that has been a um major uh major thing um the next thing would probably be uh i think there's a lot more to learn about the oil paints than acrylics like i'm still trying to figure out which colors are opaque which colors are semi-transparent which colors are transparent and you know when it comes to like you know figuring out the the staining colors for pre glazes and such, um, but yeah, and then the fact that you know with oils, you're pretty much using the model as um, the palette instead of well the palette it's like you'll get all your colors prepared on the palette but the true mixing and all that kind of stuff with acrylics for the most part takes place on the palette oils it's on the figure And then the drying times, I know they're different brands and such. Um, you know, that's not a bad idea. I try to catch every one of the streams that I can. And you know, in the uh, uh, Mini Painters Guild, I think it was, uh, who was that? Hold on, let me see. Um, uh, Pun Expected, I think, has that amazing uh, spreadsheet with all that information regarding uh, paint properties and brands and everything like that. And that's been really, really, really handy. <clears throat> um, let me see here. Matter of fact, you know what? I'll go ahead and throw this 
throw this in the chat. Um, maybe. We'll see if I can. Here we go. Okay. For those of you watching that are not part of um, the Miniature Painter Guild Discord. Um, here is that Discord. I recommend everybody join that Discord. Um, whether you paint with acrylics, whether you paint with oils, I mean, even probably finger paints, there's going to be uh, somebody there that is going to be able to point you in the correct direction. Um, so let's, uh, we'll try some of this purple red. Wobble stainless, pre glaze luster. Stay strong. Don't need to wait. Egyptian violet. Indigo. Perling black. Prussian blue medium. Purple white black. Black spinel. Pendite brown. Indian yellow. Oh, very nice. Very nice. I appreciate you putting that up in there. You know, he does a lot of talk about that Egyptian Valley. I haven't I haven't grabbed any of that yet. Um, I'll tell you what. One thing I did get that I like, that I know he uses, is the um, the black spinel. And that is some amazing black. And, I mean, you talk about drying flat. I'd say that dries probably some of the flattest compared to um, any of the other uh, blacks out there. <clears throat> so we're going to try to hit up these gums a little bit. Um, we'll do look at some of this uh, red what was it red purple and add a little bit of that white to it lighten it up a little bit and this might not be so pink enough for the gums uh, well yeah it might be touch it thinner because those gums are hard to get into um, I don't know if y'all can see that that well. I think that'll be all right. That'll be good. We'll go with that. We can always come back in and do whatever we need to to it later. That does look really pink and that I have some more on there. So we might definitely end up changing that. And you know, all my new people to oils, I don't know if, if you've had the same experience that I have, but it seems like oils are so much more forgiving than acrylics. And I don't know why, maybe because it's so easy to, I, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It seems like I have a lot easier time correcting things from um, oils than I did acrylics. And I don't know, maybe because with oils, you don't necessarily have to let it dry before you go back and fix something. You can kind of just do it on the fly. Um, we'll blend that a little bit. Try to anyway. It's a pretty tight spot. Okay. I'm still trying to figure out my uh, order of operations for a uh, oil paints. It does seem like I jump around a lot more with oil paints than I did with uh, acrylics. It kind of be all over the place. Um, yeah, being able to erase the area and then blend that back in. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. And I don't, I don't know. It's like oils are magic when it comes to, you know, just 
blending them out in general, I guess. It's almost like you can't can't go wrong with it. Um, we'll grab a little bit more of this. And we'll grab just a touch of that uh, Van Dyke. Kind of hit up. Um, this lips a little bit, maybe. Still quite a bit of that pre-glaze in there. I think I'm still getting my pre-glaze a little too thick. Um, but we'll work with it. I haven't uh, stripped a model yet uh, using oils and I don't necessarily want to want to start. So we'll uh, Work with what we got. Oops, sorry about that. Yeah, that's some good outlining. All right, cool. I like the way it's heading so far. Um, we'll take some of that lighter and start uh, quote unquote uh, dry brushing it um, in the ears since it's going to be that lighter color anyway in there um, lighter color fur I should say Not bad, not bad, not bad. But it is it is crazy. You know, it's like with, with acrylics, it was taking me, you know, it'd be sometimes I'd start painting on, you know, five or six models and just not be able to tell any difference in the, the quality. And, you know, one thing about the oils, um, it's you can almost tell a difference from from model to model to model on the improvement you're getting which is really cool that's always good for the for the ego um, we'll hit up add a little bit more I'll try to go a little bit lighter on these uh A little eyebrow, maybe the top of the head. Ooh, that looks like it's gonna be good. Well, well, I just took it back down. Let's get it back up there a little bit. There we go. Ah, we're moving. Oh, nice. Oh, dude, I'm telling you, you gotta. You know, one of the greatest things about a, a 3D printer is, and, and I, in my opinion, it's all dependent upon the quality of the sculpt, but one of the things I absolutely love about a 3D printer is no mode lines. It's amazing. It's amazing. Oh shoot, sorry, I didn't realize that was off of the camera there. Okay, I do like this uh I do like this brighter color. I'm getting some contrast in there and then we'll actually go with a little bit bigger blending brush. I got my four filbert here and just kind of start blending those rough edges in. <clears throat> uh, 
spread it out to this fur up on the top a little bit. And then I'll start spreading it out this way. <coughs> pretty good so far a little bit of cleanup to do um, now we'll knock this down a little bit more and I think we'll just kind of make him darker as we go down not quite sure how well the darker will show up um, okay well darkers darker I guess looking good I guess I didn't really pick a whoo I got a little bit too a little bit out of control there um, I wasn't really thinking about the model being like a completely brown but hey Go a little bit darker. Keep working our way down there. I haven't really used any crazy colors yet. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That uh, that new handle is a uh, pretty amazing. Got to give props to Graham for pointing that out. Yeah, it's been great. Um, I think, you know what, let's try something. Let's get a little bit of this brown. Can y'all see that? Yeah. Uh, these are oil paints. Um, it's a mix between Van Gogh, Williamsburg, and some of the Hobby Lobby brand Masterson's Touch right now. I just realized I used my blending brush. Uh, for that. Ha! Hello, Green Fairy Studios. Yes, indeed. Indeed. And just to give a shout out, if Dark Art is who I think it is, I would like to give a shout out to my first of four sons that has caught a live stream of mine thank you very much if you are not my son thank you for showing up anyway I like the way this is kind of looking with that uh, Payne's gray mixed in with that uh, brown. And that's the, what was that? I think that's the Van Dyke brown. Um, it's got an interesting color, especially for shading this. It's working out kind of kind of nice in my opinion. Get it down on those lower levels and up underneath here where he's all like.
Now I have ordered the uh, the again from Grim. You'd think I'd go to him to learn stuff. Um, he uses the I believe they're Cobra brand water soluble metallics. They've got two golds and a silver. Um, I have placed those on order, so waiting for those to to show up. Look at some of that color in here on the inside of the ears here. We'll just pretend like they're not in full light. I guess they're really not. Um, we'll grab our little blendy brush. Let's hit those edges a little bit. Um, and again, like I said, uh, uh, oh, oh, nice, nice green fairy. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about getting them. It's kind of funny though. I've got my, uh, I have my. Um, hold on a second and I'll show you before I make a mess. As you can see here, I am uh, prepared to learn or actually earn the title. There's my refined linseed oil and I have my, uh, my box of my metal pigments. Now I just have to figure out how to mix them. So we are, we are on our way. We are on our way to big things. <clears throat> and I think James on his stream last night actually mixed up those metallics. I think he uses the uh, Green Stuff World metal pigments and somehow I've completely missed that entire part of the stream. So not, uh, not happy about that, but that's why you can rewatch them. Um, oh, nice. Well, if you get to yours before I get to mine, you'll have to let me know how they do. Oh, a matter of fact, I think, uh, actually, I think you were the one that posted the picture in Discord, which made me kind of, kind of go after him. So, thank you for that. See, let's see if we can thin this down just a little bit and get some get some white in those eyes. There's still a bit of the pre-glaze in there. I couldn't actually get out all the way. And so we'll see if we can do it without mixing too much of it in. I'm sure we'll get some of it, but... It's not bad. I'm going to need to brighten them up just a little bit more, probably. Guess we can just get in there and see uh, where the eyeballs are at. in a little bit but not not bad we can, we can work with it all right um, all right I like the way it's going so far um, I need to try to get us a little bit more of some uh, different browns in there um, Lighten it up a little bit more around some edges. And we'll hit up those. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I, I caught a lot of his stream yesterday. That was a really long stream he did. I think it ended up being like 12 hours. Um, so, two drops of linseed oil and add pigment to consistency. I don't, did he happen to show what he uses to add the pigment? I think that's the biggest thing I'm running into right now because I can't really use a dropper for it. And I don't really just want to sit there and treat it like a salt shaker. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Green Fairy Studios. Yeah, I, uh, look with, with what I've been able to do in oils for like the past, I don't know, three, four weeks, I've started using them. It's like leaps and bounds ahead of what I was after three to four weeks using acrylics for the first time. I wish, I wish I could, uh, go back and use oils from the get go. <clears throat> Man, you know what? We're uh, we're doing it live. Let's do this. We're about to get into this right now. Little sculpting tool. All right, give me one second. All right, here we go. I got my sculpting tools. Got a pipette. Let's just get into it. Remember, folks, you saw it here first. We're about to do this. So, here we've got some Gamblin refined linseed oil. Yeah, let's do it. No better time than the now. If I can open this up without shoving my finger all the way down with linseed oil. All right, so here we go. We got let's get a dry roll. Here we go. We'll start out with two drops. All right, there is two drops of linseed oil. All right, now let's see. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, silver gray. Let's see. I think that'll work out good. Man, I tell you what, they don't make these things for people with big hands. That's for sure. All right, we'll try the we'll try the silver gray. Now, if this just messes up the whole thing, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, well, I can tell you, don't take after me. That's what I can tell you if it messes up the whole thing. Oh my goodness, little metal flakes are going all over the place. <laughs> all right, so I'm pretty sure I just got metal flake in every bit of paint that's on my uh, palette. But I guess it'll pull it all together. Man glitter, yeah. Wife, I told you, you're going to love this stuff. Um, let's see here. We got, I think I got something with the spoon on it. Maybe. Okay, here we go. Here's. This will work. That's kind of a little spoon. Yeah, glitter bomb. Almost turned into it. That's for damn sure. Uh, all right. So there's metal pigments. Uh, so that took it about to the consistency of um, acrylic paint, kind of. Um, man, you know what? Woo, what have I done? All right, um, we're gonna get a little bit more oil. <clears throat> and uh, we're gonna drop some more down there. All right, that might have been too much, but we won't know for a second. And a separate. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess I could have done that, but it is what it is. 
Uh, let me grab something else to... Okay. I'm sorry for the tapping. I didn't realize it's probably real loud. Um, man, how many people thought they'd have showed up for my stream today and been witness to a science experiment? on the board and try it in the in the well well pallet oh wait a minute wait a minute we might be on to something Might be getting there. It's resembling paint now at least. All right. Now, if I'm not mistaken, somebody with more experience than me uh, confirm or uh, tell me I'm wrong in the chat but pretty much the one of the I guess biggest differences between uh, artist grade and student grade oil paints is it the size of the pigment the amount of the oil in it or both Sit that there. We got plenty of stuff to clean our brushes with. Let's uh, let's get into this. A student uses filler. Um, would you be able to give of uh, Irish girl? I'm a slightly more finely ground pen, but the main there is a student grade has other. What would be? And I'm not. I, I really don't know. I'm asking for general uh, curiosity. What what would be considered a filler? Go. Let's try this out. All right. Wow, that really is. That really is transparent, huh? All right. You can see it's on there, but yeah, it is more of a. I guess in acrylics, this would be acting like more of a filter almost um, so uh, losing track of all my tools here there we go I got a little bit more we can thicken that up some beeswax res ah okay okay Cheaper pigments, fats. Well, I think we got a decent consistency here. Let's see what we got. 
I think we're still going to end up with that kind of transparency. Is that just like a general thing across uh, oil metallics? Goodness. Let's see what we got here. So, I think a lot of that I probably got to. Uh, it's too great. Mine also use less for finely seed oil in some brands. Ah, uh, okay. Um. All right. Well, this stuff is. different that's for sure okay so on a couple of things with this number one this is the first time I've ever mixed my own oils so that's a big step in my book uh, number two that I don't, I don't think I'm far off okay I think just said uh, Okay. All right. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm far off. Not there, but not far off. I'd say if it was a map, I'm in the same state. So I'm not across the country. Um, they seem kind of finicky to work with, but this is literally my first time ever even messing with oil um, and metallics so um, I think uh, pun expected definitely has the uh, right idea as far as the well goes yeah I don't I appreciate that yeah I don't think so I think it's I think it's all right um, of course, I somehow slung my thumb through some. I don't even know what color that is. Where did that come from? Oh, Naples yellow. Um, I think working with them, I think it's definitely something you'd be able to get. Um, uh, you can definitely tell where they're laying down, especially on the camera. Um, they well, of course, like most stuff, they look better on the camera than they do in person. Um, so yeah, not bad, not bad. Um, and like I said, another thing is too, I think I might not have gotten off enough of my, uh, pre-glaze either. So that could be something to do with it. A lot of variables, a lot of them, but it's all good. Oh, nice, 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 nice. All right. Um, all right, let's get back to the. Wolf head a little bit. Definitely gonna be cleaning those brushes later. Um, let me put the lid back on this thing before it just becomes a complete disaster. All right. <clears throat> so, um, let's get in there and try to get these teeth a little bit better. Uh, Facebook Pro makes me paint to use a palette knife and move the mix around a lot. Scrape it and spray it. Yeah, I couldn't. It was kind of a. I wasn't expecting to do it. I've got a. One of those Dollar Tree palette knives around here somewhere, but it's not available right now. Um, I kind of want to push the highlights up on those ears a little bit more. There's definitely more room to take them up there. And I'll put a little bit more white. Oh, I got 
glitter on my fingers. Oh my goodness. This is going to be crazy. And I used my uh, it's my six filbert to mix metallics with. So let's see what we got here. Um, there's a four. We're gonna wipe this off and use it. So uh, one lesson learned: if you're going to mix uh, metallic paints for the first time, okay, and I know this from experience, very recent experience, actually. Um, you might not want to be working on another project when you do it. And you might not want to do it on the same palette. Werewolf works at a <laughs> And you might not want to not only not do it by next to a project you're working on, definitely not the same palette because I can see little metal flakes all over the place. I tell you, I think this might be the last all brown figure I do. Yeah, fancy. Yeah, he's definitely got the sparkles, that's for sure. Yeah, I don't know if that's getting picked up at all, but yeah, it's there. That's for sure. Um, good. Work it down that side a little bit more. his eyebrows a little bit. Does anybody else have a problem getting like a point on a brush using oil paints? Because I sit there and you know, I work the brush around like I used to with acrylics to get a point and it's like, no, not happening. Sorry. These angles, goodness. Uh, um, we got nothing good. Okay. Um, let me use this. To, uh, blend it. We're on to something. Blending with oils is so crazy. It's like just touch it. That's all I gotta do. Just whoosh, and it's done.
Alright, yeah, that's looking better. A little better. I like that. I probably get a little bit right in there on the top of the head. Um, let's show that going back a little bit more. Um, maybe. Yeah, we'll take it back a little bit. Pretty high spot. Let's brush off. And tap, 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 tap. Um, I have lights are kind of bright. Um, all right, we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, I think some of this brighter color might need to come down on the back a little bit. Still pretty. Um, in the light. Off a little bit and tap, 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 tap. Is that is that very well in focus? It's that actual metallic that's kind of jacking me up a little bit. There we go. Does that look better? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, it looks like real fuzzy in here. Mm. All right, well, we'll get a... A little, little bit of this um, brighter color. Um, along the top of his nose. You hear the huffing and puffing in the background. That would be my dog. Uh, apparently, she doesn't want to be in here with me right now. Nope. No, apparently, she does. She just laid down. But she will definitely let you know if she is not happy with her circumstances. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, yeah, I think that's better. Oh, yeah. 
Ah, we got something going on. Wait a bit right in there. Show that bridge. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. That is all right. Um, touch it back in here a little bit. You gotta be careful getting around that uh, Payne's gray brown mix. Because um, I get the feeling that has a potential to just wreck the whole thing. It's like blue. Blue will hijack the whole thing. Alright, so. <clears throat> now we'll. Uh, Stay away from that blue. Blend that in. Let's get those edges softened up. It's kind of starting to take over. So. Really trying to leave some of those lower parts in there. Um, so, a little bit underneath that eye. With that cheekbone area. Um, man, I really don't have the smaller brush, do Um, here we go. I'll try this one. This is a, a good old trusty from, uh, pen washes where, you know, I've never, so, okay, question about a pen wash. Is that just thinning the, is that just thinning the oil down real thin to where it runs? What's the difference between a pen wash and a regular wash? I'm not, I'm not sure. That's not bad. I like the way this turned out. This is pretty good. I think I'm gonna try to go a little bit lighter on those eyes. Um, I wanted to wanted to pop a little bit more, a little bit more. Don't want them white, but we need them, need them brighter. Pin line wash is applied. Should apply this one. Oh, okay, okay. How in the world did I get? Some wood in my paint's gray. Y'all see that? I don't know how that happened. All I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Where's it at? All right, here we go. So we're really gonna do up the uh, nose right. Okay, here's some of that black spinel. All right, that I was talking about. <clears throat> it's like the flat black. All right. Um, I 
Hey, with sparkles. Imagine that. All right. So let's touch this up here. this black on the nose better mo better mo better yeah oh yeah that stands out a lot better okay all right yeah I'll uh I don't know exactly where well I can't say I know where but I don't know. Let me see if I can kind of dot some of these whisker spots. Not very well. I don't know. I don't know why he's only got three whiskers. I don't know why. All right, you know what, we're gonna, let's just, let's see if we can get rid of that right now. Just about blend that out, so that's not bad. Um, all right, so we'll take, um, a little bit darker with, um, the fire highlight color here it's getting a little difficult to work so let's loosen it up a little bit a little bit more and we're going to use this for the highlights on the I guess higher, well, it's kind of weird, the angle. We'll go with the angle. Higher levels of fur. Um, we'll use just a little bit darker color on. Um, of course, not taking into account the fact that this is going to look brighter because it is on the darker fur. No for next time. Now I got it kind of going darker down there, so I don't really want to get into that yet. And then <clears throat> got a brush here, and then we just start tapping and you want to pay attention too because no matter what you do some of that darker color is going to get picked up on the brush and you kind of want to just blend out the edges of the lighter color you don't necessarily want to blend the lighter with the darker so you got to kind of pay attention to to what's going on so you don't start coming up with a muddy mess. Um, where is? I'll tell you what. We're gonna try to go. Oh, it's so thin. All right. We're gonna try to go with some of the ground white. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we'll go in this corner over here with Mr. Wolf. Um, we're gonna go with some of this. I really want those eyes to pop. And the teeth, actually. Uh, so we're going to go with some ground white. And 
what we're going to do, we're going to take some of that ground white and we're going to add a touch of this titanium white to it. So it should kind of give us something to stick. Because I don't know if maybe that's just the way the uh, the ground white works, but it seems awfully thin, or if it's the way I mixed it to move it into the dropper bottle. Um, but we'll see if we can get them brightened up here, even just a little bit. And I'm kind of just tapping it in there. I don't necessarily want to brush it um, just because I don't want it to uh, blend with that darker color yet. Uh, I can't tell if that actually... I guess I braided it up just a little bit. We'll see, that one eye is closed a little bit more than the other one. So... Let's try it on this other eye. Because one thing you don't want to do with eyes, unless you're doing something cartoony, in my experience, is just paint them white. Um, nothing has solid white eyes except for cartoons. So, take that for what it's worth. I guess that did make them pop a little bit more. So we're good. All right. Dang. All right. Um, let's see. Maybe we can touch up those teeth a little bit. I kind of fudged up on the bottom there a little bit, but I kind of got in between the teeth. So that, no, let's see, not really any separation between a couple of those teeth on the bottom. But again, that might be where we go back in and try that pin wash that uh, Crazy Wolf was talking about. Ooh, almost lost that one. Oh. I want to go brighter on those teeth and we have to go thick on thick so um, I don't want it to be solid white so let's grab this touch man you see how quick that Van Dyke Brown took over that white holy cow All right. I don't want to hit a point where the it comes unworkable and I just keep messing up the same spot. So call that for the teeth for now um we'll get some highlights in there on that chest a little bit but they'll be significantly darker than the other uh the other highlights um let's see See what happens if we take a little bit of this white. Uh, I think we 
maybe a little bit a little bit darker Try that. Let me just hit some. Yeah, I think that'll highlight well. Let the brush off. Stop getting a lot of that uh, residual color from the base coats in there. All right, now a little brush in here and start tapping. Get rid of those rough edges. All right. Um, uh, let's see. I'm not quite sure what we can do for the eyeballs. Saw some interesting colors online. Um, Kind of, I think it'd be kind of cool to do them a red. Let's try it. Let's try red. We're gonna make the eyeballs red. Um, let's bring this right here a little bit. Here's a werewolf, right? All right, so this is cadmium red medium, okay? So this should definitely be a punch of color on those eyeballs. And maybe we can get something in there to blend around around them. So it shouldn't have regular, regular wolf eyes. Oh, I like that. I think that's gonna look good. Yeah, yeah, I like the eyes a lot better red. Much, much better. Um, man, I tell you what we're going to do. Because we're doing all this new stuff today. All right. I ain't never painted a wolf before. That's a first. I've never, ever, ever mixed my own metallics. That was another first. And I've never done red eyeballs. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try something. It's gonna be dangerous. So everybody kind of bear with me here, okay? First of all, we're gonna try to clean up this little edge right here. All right. Now, here's what we're gonna try to do. We're gonna try to take. Oh, almost went to the wrong color entirely. 
Um, here's what we're gonna do. Let's take some of this white and put it over here. And it's mixed with the red look a little bit. That's all right. That is okay. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put, man, oh, I hate doing the eyes. Okay, so we're gonna put a little dot right there. Yeah, here's a little trick for you, doing eyes. Flip it upside down. Thin it. Let's try to thin it down a little bit. Get it all in there. I think we're running into the thick on thin, or the thick on thick, I should say. Make it a little bit more workable. And let's get in here with this dot. You know what, maybe I should have did. Okay, okay. nope, not gonna work. Here we go, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put a little bit of white down the middle of that. And then, let's see if we can take one of these other brushes and blend that a little bit. this one. All right. All right. Oh, you can kind of see that. A little bit of a glowing eyeball action in there. Um, I think his gums are too bright at this point. So, um, we'll do some alizarin red. <sighs> I think that might suit us a little bit better than what we got going on. Okay. Um, do, do, do. We'll use this brush. Oh. All right. Um. I think that'll be good. That'll be good. Um, get it in there. Does that blend it a little bit? Yeah, I think that's a lot better. A lot better. Um, we did get a little crazy with the uh, eyeball there a little bit so we'll see if we can knock that back down just a little bit with this clean up that edge all right um, and let's see all right well we got black we got white 
So, got a short little brush that I don't know what's used for. So, let's get a little bit of this white. It's got some other colors in there, but it's okay. We'll get a little bit of this uh, spinel black. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and I want to use kind of a small brush for this. Get a little wet. And touch it just a little bit. A small brush so it'll soak up all the mineral spirits in no time. But I don't necessarily want to leave this nose just straight black, so I'll put a touch of gray here for a highlight. Bottom of a little nostril there. Yeah, I'll do a little bit of an edge. On that inside there on one side. Mm. And now we we'll just step, step, step. Holy cow! Holy thread coming out. All right, well, hold on. Kids, don't do this at home. So, I think, um, can't do the metallics yet, so I'll have to go back in after this is dry and touch up the uh, metallics, um, but it is, I think it's, I think it went pretty well for the, uh, for the stream today, um, pleased with the way it turned out, um, I've previously in the stream put up the link for the Discord, I'll post some wit pics of it in there. Um, but yep, yeah, I'm pleased. I think it's good for a couple hours work. And you know, every time I paint oils, it makes me a believer because I made it further than this two hours with oils than at my skill level I could have ever done with acrylics. So, um, I want to thank everybody for, uh, staying with the stream today. Really appreciate it. I appreciate the conversation. Um, and what we're going to try to do, we'll try to do something a little bit different this time. Um, we're going to attempt to raid someone. So we don't have that many people, but a raid is a raid. We will see who's on. Maybe. Goodness. All right. Um, I'll tell you what. We will, ah, thank you, Crazy Wolf. That's that's what it's all about, man. Uh, getting in there and uh, trying something new. Um, so we will, we are going to attempt to raid Mohawk Miniatures. So let's see what we can get going here. Never rated anybody before. I guess the worst thing that could happen is it doesn't work. It's only four, but hey, we will see what happens. I don't know if I can do this through the um, through Twitch Studio. Um, I bet you I can't. So let's do this. Let me go to my channel. Um, There we go. Oh, hot miniatures. All right, again, everyone. 
Thank you, and I hope you have an amazing weekend. Thank you, and I hope you have an amazing weekend.